Hi, I'm Angie Campos. Um, I'm a La Casa mom. I have four kids, 19, 18, 17, and 11. Hi, I'm Bree. I'm a La Casa mom also, and I have two kids, two boys, five and seven. I think the biggest thing is that you never stop learning. That's why I keep coming. I mean, I've been coming for years because every single time I learn something, but also like from my 19 year old to my 11 year old who's in fifth grade, like just parenting him and the things that I've learned are very different from the older three. As to my older son now in elementary school, it's a it's like a different road he's on. And so some of those speakers just tell you different ways to incite your daily routines with raising him and that you still have your preschooler at home. So you kind of have to multitask and you get you get that from the speakers. You get ways to do it all. Each meeting is very different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine where my family would be and my kids would be or my marriage would be if I hadn't had this for all of the years and stuff and all of the things that I've learned and stuff. But we would love for people to come and join our group. We would love for any moms in any stage of life to join us. I think you can't do it alone. Like you need that support and community. Even if you feel like you could do everything, you can't. You can't and you always learn. My name's Cyril. My name's Paige, and we've been married five years. Todd Merwin, and this is my beautiful wife. She'll introduce herself. Uh, we've been married 36 years. Seeing a lot of the these older couples that have made it through way harder stuff than we've been through is very, like, it's good models to see. Like, obviously, we have our parents that have been married for a really long time, but seeing outside of that context that, like, people can go through a lot and still love each other and be married for 50 and 60 and ridiculous amounts of years and to be able to like aim for that I think is something that's really cool. We come in and we learn how to do something a little better than we were doing it before. I think we always need those reminders because everything else in our life is going on and sometimes we forget we have to worry about us. Each other, yeah. I love the speakers because they all have a different perspective and they and, and they're not out they don't come in and do the same topic right they all provide a unique insight uh, and advice that's that's applicable and relevant kind of regardless of where you're at this time is set aside with intention and so we come and kind of work on our relationship but in a fun way I mean here we are 36 years later we're still learning I can't imagine how much we'd have learned that first 10 years. It's a chance to really get a chance to reacquaint yourself with your wife. <laughs>
seated this morning. It is our blessing and our joy at this time to welcome new members in our midst. We've received 70 new members of La Casa de Cristo since January. We received 30 this weekend, and if you got your hand out this morning, I hope you match names with faces, not just for those that are joining at this service, but at our other services as well, uh, so that you can greet them as new members in our midst. We're very blessed that God is uh, bringing us these new members. So I'm gonna ask them to come forward and join me up here in the front, and we're gonna face the congregation at this time. So come on down, and uh, we wanna welcome these new folks in our midst. So come on over. Gary, I have your name tag too, so there you go. <laughs> We'll make you official now. All right. All right, good. Okay, you guys will join me. I won't bite, come on in. All right, great, good. So uh, these folks, along with those that you see listed in your handout and also others that have joined at the other service have gone through our new member orientation. We're so blessed that they bring different, different gifts to us. Uh, also, when you go home today or at a time that's convenient for you, check out our interlude because during the interlude this morning, um, we interviewed some of our new members as well before the 915 service as a way of getting to know them. So we are grateful for you and God gives us different gifts. We all have different gifts and these folks have different gifts as well. But together, as Paul wrote, we are all part of the body of Christ. And so we're grateful for that. Some of us serve behind the scenes, some of us serve in more public ways, but we all serve together. So is it your intention at this time to join us as a part of the La Casa family? If so, would you answer yes by the help of God? Yes, by the help of God. And is it your intention to welcome these folks as well as all of those in our midst uh, to work uh, shoulder by shoulder and side by side as we work for the kingdom of God here on earth? Would you answer yes by the help of God? Let's all pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for these members in our midst. We are so grateful that you've brought them to us along with the others who have joined at the other services. And so grateful that you continue to move our congregation forward in faith. As such, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you have brought these folks to us. May we continue to work for your kingdom in this city, in our state, in the nation, and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On behalf of the great King and Lord of the church, we welcome you and we are grateful for all of you. God's blessings be with you. Let's welcome these folks into our midst. Thank you so much. I promise them as I always do, they always wonder what's gonna happen on New Member Sunday. I always tell them it's painless, so it's all, always good. At this time, we're gonna invite our kids to come forward for our children's message. And so if they'll come forward at this time and join me up here, we'd love to have them uh, join us. We know you're out there, come on down. It always takes one to get the ball rolling. All right, we got a couple coming. Awesome, great, come on down. I know there's more of you, come on. Come on, join me.
and I'm going to pass out something to you today. So if you guys would actually just take one of those and pass them around, that would be great. How we doing? All right, good. All right, pass them around. So we're going to talk about something today that's even hard for those of us that are big kids to understand, and that's the topic of prayer. Um, any ideas when we pray to God? When are some times we pray to God? Any ideas? Yeah. Dinner. Dinner time, very good. At nighttime, good, before bedtime. Any other times? We pray to God during church. We can pray to God at any time, and that's the awesome thing. And that's why I loved what Sam said at the beginning of the service. You know, it's so funny how the Holy Spirit works because like people think that's all coordinated and we talked about that and we didn't. I didn't know what he was gonna say. And it's so awesome that he said that, you know, we can all approach God no matter who we are. So I got this poem for you today and you can take it with you. You can color it if you want, you can write on it if you want, but this is a poem by a lady named Maria Hodgson. And she says this, I can pray. I can pray when the moon glows at night. I can pray when the sun shines bright. I can pray lying in my bed. I can pray standing on my head. I can pray when I'm sad. I can pray when I'm glad. No matter where I am, God can hear me when I pray. God can hear me talk to him anytime, night or day. And that's what we're gonna be talking about a little bit later because here's the greatest thing that Jesus does for us in prayer is he gives us himself. And that's what's awesome. He's always available for us. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so glad that you are always there for us. We are so glad that we can pray to you at any time, whether it's a mealtime, whether it's nighttime, whether it's in the morning or midday, whether it's at school or here at church, wherever we may pray, God, we thank you so much for the gift that we have in Jesus Christ, that we can come to you at any time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys and gals for coming up. Appreciate you all. And as they head back to their seats, let's move out of our seats, greet a new face today, and share the peace of the Lord with one another. Take a seat, we're gonna share in our morning offering at this time, and after the offering's received, then you can stand or sit as you desire. Father, kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are. Faithful. Yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes. You have broken every curse. Keep my sin, Redeemer. You have set this cap free. And I
Can you promise my confidence? Is your faithfulness, Lord, I will rest. Can you promise my confidence? Is your faithfulness, oh, I will rest. seated this morning as we invite Gene up to read the scriptures. As found on page 735 in the Bibles located in the back, a reading from Luke chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend. Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Jean. In light of that Gospel that Jean just read, I think it's important that we focus on prayer this morning because there's a lot of muddled and kind of half-baked ideas that many of us have about prayer that have simply become accepted as a part of the Christian faith. And that kind of comes to light in the rather ridiculous story that's told about a man who was told by his doctor that he needed to lose a few pounds. Now, every day on the way into work, this man stopped at a bakery and picked up donuts and other sweets. And so he was told he needed to cut that out. And so he boldly proclaimed to his coworkers he was going on this new regimen. And all of this worked pretty well for about two weeks. And all of a sudden, one morning, he showed up at the office, and he had two dozen donuts and a large sheet of coffee cake. And they asked him what had happened, and he said, well, I accidentally went my old route to work, and I saw this sign in the window that donuts and coffee cake were on sale, so I saw this as a sign from God. 
And I said, and I said to God, Lord, if this is to be from you, if this is a sign, then provide a parking space for me. And he paused for a minute and he told his co-workers and after the eighth time around the bakery, a parking space <laughs> did open up. Now we chuckle at that, but the reality is many times that's the way we approach prayer. God, provide me with this parking space. God, provide for my every need. I have been a Phoenix Suns fan since 1968. When I was five years old and I prayed for a championship and three times we've come close, but we've never gotten it. I don't know where sports ranks with God, but I'm still praying. <laughs> but you know, the reality is that when we approach prayer this way, our Lord is very wise. He understands our human condition. And that's why in this gospel you heard today, he inserted a story after he taught us to pray with the Lord's Prayer and in that story that you heard Gene read, he talks about a man who had some unexpected guests. Now, in the Judea and Palestine of Jesus' day, it wasn't like our day where we know where everyone's flights come in or we can track people with our phones with GPS and, and we know when they're going to arrive at our home. In the desert, oftentimes people traveled at night to avoid the heat of the day. And people showed up when they showed up. And oftentimes they would show up in the middle of the night. So Jesus tells the story about some guests that arrive and the man has no food in his place. And so he goes to his neighbor's house and he knocks on the door. Now, again, in that time, people didn't have separate bedrooms. They often all slept to stay cool at night in one room on one floor, usually on the ground level because it would be hotter on the upper level. And so this guy doesn't want to get up. He doesn't want to disturb his family. He hears the knocking on the door, but finally he gets up and he grants he grants the request of his neighbor and gives him bread. And Jesus concludes with these words, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. And here's where we run aground. Because you and I have always had this experience where we have asked and God has not granted our prayers in the way that we wanted. And I'm not talking about the more ridiculous things like sports teams or parking spaces. I'm talking about serious things. When we've prayed for a loved one and things haven't worked out the way we wanted to, or we've prayed for a burden to be removed from us and God has not removed that burden, or we've prayed for a situation and it never seems to get resolved. In fact, many times we have asked and it has not been granted unto us. And many times we have knocked on God's door and it seems that door has not opened. In fact, at times it seems maybe it's been slammed in our face. So what do we do when our prayers are not answered in the way we desired? Here's the key to the perspective on prayer that we need. And it doesn't come from me, it comes from our Lord in the scriptures today. When he says, ask, and it will be given unto you, we have misinterpreted it to mean whatever we want. We believe asking for it is whatever we want. And the reality is we will pray for things and sometimes those prayers are granted and sometimes they're not, but it is not what we want. The reason he told this story in this way was that man didn't knock on the door and ask for a five course meal. That man didn't knock on his neighbor's door and ask for steak. That man knocked on the door and he asked for bread, the staple of life the world over. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It is the gift of Jesus himself. It is God's grace and mercy. It is the gift of God in our life every day. It is not whatever we want. Now, let me be clear here. Scriptures tell us we should lift up those in need. We should pray for those who are ill, those who are struggling. We should pray for our loved ones. We should play, pray for strangers. We should pray even for our enemies. We are to be specific in our prayers. But how those prayers are granted and answered 
is not up to us. We are so arrogant that we think it is. And that's why we get into this idea of prayer as some kind of magic good luck charm where, yeah, Lord, I'm going to pray for that open parking space. Yes, Lord, I pray for my favorite sports team. That is not the purpose of prayer. That's why Jesus granted us the Lord's Prayer. And when you look at those words, they're so important. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. And the reality is we live in a broken world. And many things happen to us, and they are not God's will at all. In the verse after this morning's gospel, read on in Luke there, and it's very clear. It says, what parent, if their child asks for food, would give their kid a scorpion? God never does bad things to us. He never sends bad things to us to test us or to punish us in our faith. Some Christians believe that. That is not the God we believe in. God is love, and he never wishes us harm. But in our broken world, our world of sin and suffering and disease and heartache, these things happen. So then, how do we understand all these things? We go back to understanding the story of the neighbor. He helped his neighbor out at midnight. God is available whatever time we need him, whatever time we want him. It is, as was shared at the beginning of our service, the fact that we can't walk into the governor's office, we can't walk into the White House, but we can access God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What a gift that is, but yet how often we ignore it. How often we think prayer is just about getting what we want. When we say, ask and it will be given unto you, the gift of it is the gift of Jesus himself. And that means whether our prayers are answered exactly in the way that we desire or not, we have the gift of him who is with us every day, his grace and his mercy. But don't take my word for it. Don't just say, well, because Pastor Jeff said this, let's go back to Scripture and see a very clear example of this. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul had some kind of thorn in his flesh. We don't know and are still debating after 2,000 years what that thorn was. Some people say it was a disease. Some people maybe even believe it was leprosy. Some believe it was blindness or vision issues. Some believe that he struggled with uh, stuttering and he had a speech impediment. Some people believe he struggled and was manic depressive, that he actually had some kind of mental illness or suffered from serious depression. We don't know what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. But what Paul tells us in the second letter to the Corinthians is three times, Three times he prayed to God to remove this thorn. Now, we don't know if that was three times in a day, three times in a week, three times in a month or in a year or in a decade or over 20 or 30 years. We don't know. But he prayed that this burden would be removed. And Paul writes, it was not removed. His prayers were not answered in the way he desired. But he wrote this. Here was the answer he was given. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. If it's good enough for Paul, that should be good enough for us. To understand that indeed God grants us when we ask, seek, and knock what we desire, but it may not be exactly on our own terms, but he always gives us the gift of himself. The words of an old poem by a soldier, I think, say this more clearly and succinctly than I can. And this is the poem. I ask God for strength that I could achieve great things. I experienced weakness so that I might learn to humbly obey. I asked God for health that I could achieve. I experienced infirmity and challenges so that I can do even better things. I asked God 
for riches so that I could enjoy all things. I experienced struggle and poverty so that I could learn to empathize with my neighbor. I asked God for all things that I could enjoy life. I was given life that I could enjoy all things. I got almost nothing that I asked for, but everything that I hoped for. And almost despite myself, my prayers were answered because we are amongst all people most richly blessed. The gift that is given is the gift of Jesus Christ. Ask, and he will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find him. Knock, and he will walk through that open door to you and for you. This is the perspective on prayer we all need to have. And those aren't my words. That's the gospel. Amen. We will worship at this time as we share in our communion. I'm going to invite our band to come forward at this time. And as they come up, I want you to really take time during communion today to think about prayer in your own life and to think about the fact that as God's people in this place, that through this gift, Jesus does give us bread and he is the bread of life. As we heard in that gospel, bread is the staple the world over. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a whether it's a rye bread or whether it's a tortilla or whether it's a bagel, it's the staple of life the world over. It's the reason why Jesus said, I am the bread of life, because he gives us the gift of himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Every time you gather, do this to remember me. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks. And he said, drink from this cup because this cup is now the new covenant shed in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. For as often as we eat from this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us share together in our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. If you are visiting with us for the first time this morning, you are welcome to the Lord's table. That is a free gift that he gives to all who believe in his son, Jesus. Receive the wafer of bread and then dip it into the chalice of wine or hold it over the chalice of wine as you desire. God's gifts are ready for his people. I invite the communion assistants forward at this time.
God, as we come to you today, we all have the specific prayers of our hearts, and we do desire that you grant them. Help us to know always, though, that you are looking out for us, and in that time that you always come to us, and bidden or not, you come into our lives as the Lord of our life, and we are grateful for that. Help us to know that you are the bread of life, and that we can come to you at any hour of any day, and you grant us the gift of yourself, which is all we need as we move out into the world. We ask you, bless this meal, bless this bread, this wine, your body and blood to strengthen us for service. That as the worship time ends, now the service begins as we move out into the world to serve you through those we know and through those we don't know. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord smile upon us and look upon us with his favor. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. Come let us bow at his feet, he has done great.
have done praising. 